Hi guys and welcome back to another Dots Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. Now today, I have something rather interesting to do. I wanted to come to the Circuit of the Americas and chuck in a couple of laps in time trial. I was about to record a race a moment ago, but then I remembered in career mode we won quite comfortably on the hardest difficulty, so I thought, you know what? That time trial time definitely needs a bit of work. Two minute three is not going to cut it for me, so as far as I'm concerned, I think we can probably get a mid 159, maybe a low end 159. 158 might be a bit of a stretch, but we'll see how it goes within today's time trial video. Now, of course, we are going to also look at discussing a little bit about the Circuit of the Americas in two weeks' time. That, of course, is real life MotoGP, and uh, I strongly feel that Jorge Martin could be the man to beat in the Circuit of the Americas. Now, I know there's a lot of people looking immediately at a certain name when they see Cota, and you're not wrong, you, you are not wrong to believe that. Uh, Mark Marquez has been absolutely dominant at this counterclockwise circuit, and is always set excellent in those types of circuits. However, I'm not convinced yet that Marquez has fully got the grasp of that Ducati yet. Give him time. Maybe it won't be this weekend, but there's definitely a win coming. But I just don't see it yet. As much as the fans want to say Pedro Acosta win this weekend, I also don't see that happening as well. But I tell you what, if that happened, that would be absolutely magnificent. And I can't wait to see if that happens. But let's stick to the topic. Jorge Martin is definitely the ride I'm thinking is capable of winning in the Circuit of the Americas. Now, there's been a lot of talk recently regarding Pramac possibly moving on from the Ducati squad, maybe moving over to something like KTM or even Yamaha, and that's really piqued my interest, and it just seems fitting that someone like Jorge Marti, with all that drama talking, I guess it's not drama, but it's a lot of speculation, it seems fitting that someone like Martin would then come in and win, and then probably say something relative to the concept of moving teams or changing over. Probably another comment about not him being in red, he would not be here with the Ducati or something like that, for example. So, really curious to see what's going to happen, but there's something telling me two weeks from now, this man on your screen right now will win either the sprint or the featured race. He was excellent in Portimao and he's pretty good in the Qatar sprint as well, so it would be hard to bet against the Martinator. Could this be the year we see another satellite motorcycle win in the MotoGP Championship? I know there's a bit of a grey area with that one because Valentino Rossi was a satellite Honda back when he won in the 500cc days, but it was also factory supported. But then again, so was the Pramac Ducati, so I don't know how we're really looking at that with, this, with the terms of independent team. I'm sure someone can enlighten me in the comments. But uh, yeah, I'm strongly believing that Jorge Martin is the man to get it done in two weeks' time. Of course just opinion just the way I'm feeling right now give it a week give it two weeks I might be doing another video saying you know what I don't think it's gonna happen but that's what I'm thinking right now as of today now let me know in the comments section down below what you think as well I'm always keen to talk to you guys about MotoGP it's the best and safest place on the internet to talk to people as far as I'm concerned going on the likes of Instagram Facebook and Twitter it's just people with blinkered views from because they're a fan of a certain rider. I'm completely transparent. I'm completely neutral. I don't see favour. I just want to focus on the actual action itself. So I want to have a good chinwag. See you in the comments section down below. Now regarding the video, we've done two laps so far and both of them have been improvements to the original 2 minute 3 that we set a long time ago. I don't even know when I did that. Well, the 159.5 is pretty much where we are right now, so good stuff. And uh, to be honest, I will be happy if we stay in the 159s and we don't invalidate laps. It, it's so easy to do. It, you've got a two-minute lap here on a very arduous circuit, so just trying to keep valid lap times is going to be quite the, quite the achievement as well. But uh, let's digress now quickly back across over to the MotoGP topic. And let's get to what we were talking about earlier on. Now, 
Regarding the other Ducatis, you have to look at Peco Bagnaia, you have to look at an Air Bastini. I almost very much chose an Air Bastini for this video here today, but part of me just said, not an A yet. I do think he's going to be very competitive here, of course he has been victorious here in the past of course, but uh, circumstances are different and I would definitely expect a certain two times MotoGP world champion to bounce back and cement his place at the top of MotoGP where he rightfully belongs and that of course being Francesco Bagnaia. So I'm definitely going to keep my eye on him. I probably will shift my Fantasy League around. If you're interested in joining the Fantasy League you can do so by joining in our Discord server. We have a... I think Surger23 has pinned the actual invitation link so you should be able to go into the Discord server, click on that and then you should be invited to play on the official MotoGP Fantasy League. But into turn 20 now, a little bit deep into the final corner, but we will be improving the lap time to a 59-2-7-0. Not bad, but that's now a whole second bound within three laps. The career mode races have taught me a lot, and I'm getting better and better, I feel, with the Desmond Adici, whether it's the GP22 or the GP23. Now, of course, mentioning the GP23, it's a great segue into my next point regarding the Ducatis in MotoGP. The fact that the new riders are, that are on the GP23, that were on all the machinery, such as the GP22, are having a bit of a tough go at it. You look at Marco Bezzecchi, you look at Fabio Di Giantonio, and Alex Marquez is also not really up there like I would have expected. Now, the only outlier in that one, of course, is Mark Marquez. He didn't have to touch, or didn't touch, the, Moto G uh, the GP22, as far as I'm concerned, unless he was using a GP22 in the winter testing, and then the, uh, the testing before it, in Valencia. Not entirely sure on the answer to that one. I... Uh, probably will be able to find out but if you know the answer to that let me know so I think it could be a case of adjusting to the GP23 from a season on the GP22 could be rather difficult and correct me if I'm wrong but Pekka Banyaya also had that struggle to adapt to the 23rd Desmond Sadici so I am really curious to think that once Digia, Bez, the Marquez brothers handle and perfect the GP23 I think they should be right up there in theory with the GP24 bikes such as your Jorge Martin, your uh, Enea Bastinini and your Peko Bagnaia. I would like to include Hulk, uh, Frankie Morbidelli on that list yet but I, I think he's hardly even touched the bike really after being injured so much and uh, not getting back to full fitness it's uh, difficult to put him in that conversation but a bit, <laughs> a bit aggressive on the power there as coming out the final corner actually spam the rear I actually had a fantastic drift and slide with Jorge Martin in MotoGP 22. I actually never uploaded it because, well, MotoGP 22 is now finished and I don't touch that game. But uh, if you want to see it, let me know. It was in the Red Bull Ring of Austria coming out of turn three on the power. Rear tyre slipping and sliding looks absolutely fantastic. If you think I should upload that, let me know in the comments section down below. It's just going to be weird to see a MotoGP 22 clip just pop up from out of nowhere. If you like me uploading a Ride 3 clip or something, or Ride 4, it'd be very strange at this point. But yeah, that's uh, that's a couple of thoughts anyway that I've got regarding MotoGP. It's difficult to say now for uh, for the future. I, I really want to sit down and have a talk about the Pramac situation because I'm also hearing rumours that the VR46 team, it's, it's, it's been rumoured a long time, are now going to move over to the Yamahas as well and I actually really like that idea because we need to see more Yamahas on the grid. Two Yamahas are not going to cut it. And I understand that they're not doing very well right now, but two Yamahas, one test rider, it, it, there's not much to really do in the terms of development. No wonder Fabio Quattararo is looking elsewhere. That's a topic for another day. Will we see him with the Piangio group? Will he be with Aprilia? I don't know. But I tell you what, silly season is going to kick off soon. You could say the first domino is in place by saying Fermin Aldeguer is signing up to Pramac Ducati but I believe it's a Pramac Ducati contract meaning that Pramac will don't I don't I don't understand I have to really look into this before I really start talking about it. but my understanding is that he's now with Pramac 
team. Or there's a Ducati contract, which means you'll get the Pramac seat, but if Pramac no longer stay with the Ducati, what? how will that work? Which team will he go for then? I've already heard people saying that Mark Marquez is going to get promoted up to the factory Ducati team now because of Fermi and Aldeguer. Jorge Martin is definitely not going to be signing with the factory Ducati. So many different things that you hear now on social media, it's hard to really accept or to believe what's actually right and what isn't. A lot of it, I find, is just speculation. No different to what I'm doing right now, don't get me wrong, I don't have any inside knowledge. I just want to open up the conversation to talk to you guys and to give my thoughts and opinions, because I've, I've been told numerous times that that's what you guys want to hear, so I'm more than happy to chinwag with the aces, but uh, I've got to say, I'm really curious and already cannot wait for not just the next GP, but for the, for the next season as well. It's going to be crazy. I cannot wait to see what this year's got in store for us. I think there's so much parody compared to previous years that it's extremely exciting. Marquez on the Ducati is, of course, a, an, is a, it's an eye-watering prospect. I think that if he does well, then we're, we're laughing. We've got more battles, we've got more fights, we've got more championships to fight for. It's going to be brilliant. But at the same time, if Marquez doesn't do as well, does this affect his legacy? Is this going to affect... What Marquez has been able to do. Can he not develop a bike? You know how the the uh, the taglines go from the media. It, there's a lot of parody. There's a lot of things happening. And I'm really excited. I've even heard things like Narco Zeki might move on to something else as well. If it doesn't work out with the Ducati. There's so many different things. There's so much to pick at in such a short amount of time. But as I say, it's all speculation amongst the aces and amongst the media right now. But as it, uh, as it is for now, quickly back over, because this will be my last lap after this one. I did say I'd want to do around... The, the, I was going to do a 35% lap race, so excuse me, 35% race, so it would have been 7 laps. So I'll, I'll aim to do 7 as well, keep it, keep, the, keep it the same way. We did actually improve the lap time there by 2,000th of a second, and we're actually up once again going in to the first split. Now bear in mind I will be streaming on Monday the 1st of March, so make sure you're there. That will be the, uh, excuse me, 1st of April, should I say. 1st of April 2024. And that will be at 7pm, 1900 hours GMT, but it should be BST, I think. So it's basically British summertime as we've now changed over, or will be changing over, at the time this video drops. So I will see you Monday regardless. Be there as early as possible to make sure you don't miss any of the action. And of course you get to see Division 2 go head-to-head -head in the penultimate round of the Ace Academy Cup within MotoGP 23. Will be the final cup in MotoGP 23 before we all prepare for the 24th instalment of MotoGP. And I tell you what, this lap is coming together, isn't it? <laughs> Four tenths of a second found going into turn 12. A little bit sluggish upon the brakes. It's not so easy to go in there all gung-ho without uh, really thinking about it. You know, you can't just let it fly into that corner. It's one of those ones that just holds you back ever so slightly because you don't want to run it too deep. Hard on the brakes into the left-hand side for turn 15. I've got to say, the, the Ducati feels excellent. Really, really good. Leaning on the bike there, just braking in as much as you want. Awesome. This is definitely going to be a 58 lap time what a way to end today's video a little bit of a slide there for turn 19 that's not gonna cut it we are losing a bit of time but we should be absolutely fine so nice and calm now into turn 12 oh we lost a lot of time there was it misleading it was misleading across the line is it a oh it's not so 159 double zero nine so there you are then guys and girls seven laps of the circuit of the americas with the martinator I do hope you've enjoyed my uh, waffling about MotoGP. If you have, let me know in the comments section down below. And be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing as well. But as I say, I implore you to either join the Discord server and have a chat with us about MotoGP. Or alternatively, I'll see you in the comments section below. And let's let's talk MotoGP. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what uh, you th they think the prospects are of riders moving. If Yamaha are going to get a, fourth team, a second team for four bikes... Let me know. Is Pedro Acosta going to win the next weekend? Who knows? Let me know. But yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. 
good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.